Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel from the uh, uh, beautiful, sunny, warm West Yorkshire. When it's like this, it uh, really makes you feel a lot better after those dull days of winter and uh, it just instills you uh, to go out and just do things, whatever it is. Um, not just photography, you can go out cycling, walking, etc. It just makes you feel so much better. Anyway, uh, this video is another one in the classic cameras from the past and it's a camera that I'm sure quite a few of you will, will not have heard of I certainly didn't until I saw it on eBay and it's this it's the Taron VR 35mm rangefinder camera now I'll tell you what I paid for this camera I paid £19 for it uh, at the end uh, of the purchase I found there were certain things that didn't work as they described so I got back to the seller and he just simply refunded me and told me to keep the camera and hopefully he says you might get it working well I have done so this camera cost me nothing so I'm going to go now uh, have a little walk about and see what I can come up with just to see if it's working okay and then uh, after I take the pictures we'll have a look at them and uh, I'll give you a, a, a more detailed view of this camera because I think it might be a camera worth worth buying if you can get one that is working okay so it's very well built it's got a nice weight to it so just see, see how I go on taking the pictures and then as I say I'll show give you a closer look of the Taron 35 millimeter rangefinder camera right I've um, loaded the camera with about 15 um, frames of FP4 from my uh, bulk loader and I'll probably develop it again in uh, I think at the moment my favourite developer is Pyrocat HD and uh, I fitted on the camera the Voigtlander VC2 meter um, but I think with some of the pictures it's, the light seems constant I'll probably just take a couple of readings and uh, I, I really am not going to have to change the, uh, the meter in that, that much um, alternatively I could use the Sony 16 roll or Sony 11 roll as I call it in the UK um, but uh, I'll also uh, I'll use the rangefinder. The patch on this is quite uh, quite bright. It's not brilliant, but uh, it's usable. And um, I'll probably use the scale focus on the the lens itself. It's got a good depth of field scale, and uh, it's in feet, which is uh, very helpful. Um, I, I can't work in thing in meters, etc. I'm old school. I'm used to feet and inches and pounds and ounces, etc. Um, so that's how I'm going to use the camera. Uh, the lens on this camera is a 45 millimeter so it's a little bit wider than the 50 so i should get a little bit more in but remember i'm not because it's a rangefinder i'm not looking through the lens i'm looking through the rangefinder window so it's a representation rather than an accurate view so we'll see how we go on and uh, i just as i said just look out for pictures that i think might be interesting and hopefully the camera's going to work and not have any uh, light leaks On the first shot of today um, I'm going to focus on these uh, these ferns here and probably try and throw that background slightly out of focus so I'll be working around about f4 and uh, those ferns should because they're in the sunlight should uh, contrast nice with that darker background so I'll get the camera set up and this is the first shot It's uh, always nice to get the first shot it just seems to set you up for the rest now the rangefinder cameras are not everybody's cup of tea um, they're not as accurate um, on these type of cameras as a as an SLR camera uh, this one doesn't have a uh, movable frame lines so the closer you get you get this parallax error now if you're using a Leica or these higher end um, rangefinder cameras the, the actual frame lines move so you're not you're getting what you actually see but it's not a, a way of taking pictures that everybody likes um, I don't mind it um, I think if you're doing more precision photography SLRs are better um, you can focus, focus closer with those normally and um, 
you, you do get what you see in the viewfinder but rangefinders have their advantage the uh, they're very quiet when you fire the shutter uh, if you listen to this one it's very very quiet and um, you can focus with uh, both eyes open which somehow tends to help you with the composition uh, and all you're looking at is that uh, patch bring those two images together so they do have the advantages and you can see things coming into the frame um, before you take the picture um, so you know that's another advantage of using them so as I say not everybody likes using them but they are uh, another way of capturing images and they can be very very enjoyable because normally they're quite small uh, light and uh, um, the shutters are so quiet so So that's the first shot anyway we'll uh, move on and see what see what we can come up with next Right, I'm just uh, getting a little bit of shade. I was getting a little bit hot. In this country, it's either cold one day, one day the next day it's red hot, and we never get a chance to acclimatise. But I haven't uh, video, videoed every picture that I uh, have taken. Uh, I'm trying to keep my videos a little bit shorter. They do, they do tend to get a little bit long. But I took some pictures on the way into Otley, and then I ended up in the market square. There was uh, a vintage car uh, show going on. I took some pictures there then I thought I'd move down to the riverside and see what pictures I can come up, come up with here. By now I was really starting to enjoy using this rangefinder camera and uh, hoping and praying that the, uh, the shutter was working correctly, that I wasn't getting any light leaks and uh, I can't tell you how pleased I was when I actually uh, saw that the negatives were correctly exposed and the focusing was uh, spot on. Now, as regards metering with this uh, camera, obviously it's, it hasn't got a build, built-in meter. Uh, I was using the VC2 meter that, uh, as you can see here, it mounts onto the, the hot shoe there on the camera. And what I did was, I, because the, the light is very even today, there's not many clouds, I took a light reading in the full sun, uh, remembered that reading, and then took one in the, what you call, normal shade, and there was a difference of two stops. So I know where I'm going with the exposure now, and I've really no need, no need to use this. As regards uh, exposure, uh, I, I've wrote blogs about this, but I think in this country that uh, you're better to use uh, F11 and not F16. Uh, I think, yeah, abroad, where the, the sunlight is really intense, use the F16, but um, I think in this country, F11 works better. And I, I did prove it in some ways today, in the bright sun, the VC2 meter was giving me 125 F11. Um, I'm using Ilford FP4, so if you follow the Sunny 16 rule, you set the shutter speed uh, to the film speed that you're using. So if it's a 400 speed film, you'd use 400 ISO, and you always use the F16 uh, aperture. 
but the VT2 meter agreed with what with my thoughts that uh, you're better to use F11. So we'll just see, but I think you're always better just erring on the overexposure, if anything, rather than having the pictures underexposed. You'll get better negatives to work with. Now, um, for this next picture, I'm going to take a picture through these branches. They're going to act, act as a dark frame uh, to the brightly lit bridge. And I'm just going to wait till uh, some boats come through to add some more interest to the picture. And uh, I think I've got about four exposures left. So I'll tap this one then move on and use, use the roll up. The only thing is it's a I picked a really contrasted day to take pictures. Um, it's uh, the sunlight is really bright, but the fact that I'm using um, um, Pyrocat HD will help. It's a great developer uh, to control uh, contrast. So I'll say I'll just wait now till something comes through a boat or something, and then uh, take this picture and then uh, move on. for the older gentleman reading the book. Right, five hours later, I'm back where I started. The picture of the gentleman sat on the bench reading his book was the last exposure. Uh, so what do I think of the, the Talon after being out with it? I think it's uh, a really nice camera. Uh, it's uh, not too heavy, it's not too light, it feels solid, it's easy to get hold of. Uh, the viewfinder is bright, the rangefinder's uh, patch is easy to use, and you can see the frame lines quite clearly. The, the wind on is positive and it's a short throw, I, I like that. The, the shutter just, just weighted just nicely. Um, the only thing I didn't like with the camera was where the, uh, the aperture ring is situated. It's that there. It's very difficult, I suppose you get used to it when you use it more, but it's very difficult to set the aperture without moving the uh, actual focus. So if you've got the focus set, and then you change the aperture you, nine times out of ten you'll move that but i suppose you i suppose you would get used to that but overall uh, a really nice camera easy to focus using that uh, focusing knob there whatever they call it very very easy uh, to use uh, and i've been pleasantly surprised so uh, what i'm going to do now is uh, go back obviously get the film developed but i'll give you more in-depth re review of this camera and it might persuade you to uh, to buy one and try one uh, but let me do that first and then you can see what you think then right i hope you enjoyed the uh, pictures that i took with the taron 35 millimeter rangefinder camera i really enjoyed using it but before we uh, take a closer look at the camera i just thought i'd give you a brief history how the taron uh, came into uh, production and a brief history about the uh, the uh, company itself so i will just uh, have a little history lesson now. Right, the Japanese company that would become Taran was founded as this company and it was based in Tokyo. The company began as the manufacturer of NKS shutters. These shutters were used in the 1940 to 1942 Mamiya 6 series cameras. Its first camera, the Taraflex 6x6 TLR, dates from 1943. Now the company went through various changes during the post-war reconstruction and it survived by uh, making shutters for other camera makers such as Fujika, uh, Topcom, 
the 1953 silver six folder and the silver flex TLR cameras both using the NKS shutters. Starting in 1955, Nippon uh, Koshika began making its own Taran line of 35mm rangefinder cameras, including this VR model. It was still based in Tokyo. The company was renamed KK Taran after its own products in 1959. The company disappeared in the latter half of the 1960s. So let's uh, take a closer look at this camera. Uh, starting at the top from the left hand side, we've got the rewind uh, crank, it just lifts up. Uh, wind the, the film in that uh, direction and you, you rewind the film. You have to press uh, a button on the bottom of the camera to do that, to release the film. And then here we've got uh, a red uh, marker showing you for some reason the film plane. A cold shoe. And then they've got the writing which is not painted on etc. It's actually uh, engraved into the metal which is a nice uh, touch. The shutter button here which is uh, threaded for a standard cable release. It's got a really nice action. Uh, we've got a frame counter there which when you open the back resets it to zero. Uh, the wind on this camera is superb. It's, it's a smoother silk. Short throw and the shutter button, the weight of it feels just about right, it does for me anyway. And also when you're out with the camera so you can use it quickly that's the what you might call parked position that's the ready position so you can just go like that. So that's the top of the camera at the back it's just got the viewfinder um, very simple and plain at the back. This At this side is where you lift that latch to open the back and uh, bottom of the camera we've got the standard uh, tripod socket and this is a button you press and with this you have to keep it pressed to uh, use the rewind crank that releases the film. Um, the front of the camera uh, it's got the two range finder it's got the range finder window and the view finder it's not a bad distance um, and I found it to be very very accurate and you acquire focus by moving this lever which is really uh, nice to use uh, when you're out with a camera and as I say it's very smooth and accurate and it actually moves a depth of field scale there so you've got the markings there um, uh, distances and then you've got the f-stops on the fixed scale so you can use uh, scale focus or hyperfocal distance um, for some reason though they've missed off uh, f11 from that but uh, I suppose you can guesstimate it but I used it and it, it's accurate it's got a, a flash sync uh, for the flash sync cord there on the lens at the bottom it's got a self timer so if we wind the camera on and then set the self timer and fire it and listen how smooth and quiet this is it's about 8 to 10 seconds So smooth. The lens is a 45mm uh, Taranar uh, F2 lens and it's called a, a Nippon Koshaki uh, IND. I'm not very good uh, with my Japanese but uh, the lens is coated but I think it does if you're not careful have a, a tendency to flare and also uh, I did notice on a couple of pictures a little bit of barrel distortion with these lenses. But for, for the money uh, you pay for these cameras, um, I can put up with that. And then here we have the, uh, the dial for set, setting the shutter speed. And it runs from B, one second, right on, up to 500th of a second because it's a leaf shutter. So it'll synchronise at all speeds using flash. It's old school, it's 100th of a second, 50th, 25th, 10th. But if you're using black and white film, say if you're using... One hundredth of a second, and you meet to say one two five. One hundredth of a second is uh, absolutely fine. Uh, you'll have no problem with black and white film, and that's the same for fifty, which with, with modern meters is six of a second, and twenty fifth of a second uh, on a modern camera on a modern meter is one thirty of a second. But uh, don't worry about that. Black and white can can cope with that little bit of overexposure. And then we've got this ring. This is the only thing that I felt felt. Uh, I struggle with 
was this ring here uh, for setting the actual uh, apertures on the uh, camera. See I'm struggling now. Uh, it's just a little bit narrow to get hold of and I found the only way I can really do it is to get a nail in to move it. But I suppose with use, use you will uh, get used to that but it's the only awkward part of the camera that I found. Uh, to to uh, load the camera it's quite conventional. You open the back using that lever as I said. Pull it open. I had no light leaks with this camera so that's good. Uh, put your cassette into there. It's, uh, it's got a cut out there so it's easy to put in. Pull the fil film over so it's engaging with the sprockets. Uh, lock it into that uh, spool there and then just wind it on a couple of times to make sure it's all engaged with the sprockets. Close the back and then wind it on till you get to number one and you're set to go. So all in all, uh, a very nice camera that's not over, over complicated uh, and it's very very easy to use and as I said before it's a very nice weight um, for these type of cameras some of the some some cameras can be too light and too small this is just about right so that's it the uh, the Taran rangefinder camera up close right that's the end of the video I hope you enjoyed it and it's in uh, Spider uh, to try uh, 35 millimeter rangefinder uh, photography on the cheap. Now these cameras come up on eBay anywhere from oh, 25 pounds to over 200 pounds. Now I certainly wouldn't pay uh, 200 pounds for one of these unless it's one that has been serviced and it's in mint condition. I'd I expect to pay for one of these somewhere between 50 and 60 pounds. Now as regard mechanical cameras um, this camera was built in the 50s and if this camera's never been serviced like any other camera at some stage it's going to let you down and this is what happened with this camera. Uh, when I bought it off the seller he said it was all working but the shutter wasn't working correctly it was sticking. So I uh, got to the, the shutter by unscrewing this front uh, element on the lens and um, squirted some lighter fluid in. I don't know if I should do that but it's actually got the shutter working perfectly now. So the seller said to me keep the camera if you can get it going so I got a good deal there. But the camera itself is very very nice uh, to use. It uh, feels solid in the hand. It's a nice size. The viewfinders are nice and bright. The uh, wind on is absolutely smooth as butter. Just short throw and it's quiet. So all in all it's a great camera to get you into rangefinder photography. So that's the Taron VR rangefinder camera. Right if you enjoyed this video please give me a, a thumbs up, a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell and if you have any questions leave them below and I'll uh, get back to you and as I always say uh, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video. The Taron VR 35mm rangefinder camera.